Good morning, everyone. Sorry for crunching the microphone then. Um, we've uh, put a lamp in the way and uh, we'll rectify that in due course. Well, welcome to Cafe Church, a little bit uh, different style of service, a fifth Sunday of the month special. And I uh, hope you've got something nice to drink and eat by your side, munch away. So sorry we can't do all this together, but we'll do our best online to get that sense of fellowship and togetherness. So there'll be some questions to share answers to. So if you've got Facebook and you've got the comments there, be ready to tap your answers and then we can all enjoy what each other is contributing. Afterwards, we will be having a Zoom coffee and chat for half an hour or so. Uh, if you haven't got the link for that, then do message us now and uh, Rich will send that to you. It is the first Sunday of Advent. You'll see the Advent candle behind me already lit. And all sorts of things are happening over Advent as we prepare not only for Jesus' first coming in Bethlehem, but his second coming at the end of the ages. So today we have some Advent stations in church between two and four. Do drop in if you'd like to pray uh, in that way. Ian Holdsworth again has supplied those for who, to whom we're very grateful. Bible studies are back on Monday evenings, uh, the four Monday evenings of Advent. Join us on Facebook, 7 o'clock. We'll be looking at the Book of Revelation, uh, a lovely Advent treat for us all. And uh, keep an eye open also on the Emmanuel Facebook page every day for some prayers for uh, Advent. We're live streaming only, of course, today. And also, although uh, we'll be back in Tier 3 and out of the, the full lockdown, we're going to just have live stream again next week. But we're going to be joined by Bishop Allison. Isn't that exciting? So she's going to uh, help take part in that service. So there's going to be a real special one. That's going to be on the 6th. And then the following week, we will, God willing, be back in church at 11 o'clock. That's the 13th. And we'll be sharing communion then. So I hope you'll feel able to come. We'll be all socially distanced. It'll be as safe as we can make it. Uh, do come to that. Our first hymn. Crown him with many crowns. Their fragrance ever sweet. 
So, time for discussion. As it were, we're going to, if you can imagine, splitting off into uh, uh, little groups just around our cafe tables, but we're going to have to just do that, obviously, with people we're at home with. Uh, just have a, a, a think about this. Share a time when uh, someone has come back unexpectedly and you've been caught out. So maybe a little pang of conscience there straight away. So you may be thinking back to, oh, let's say when you were a teenager and perhaps there was a party which got slightly out of hand and, oh my goodness, mum and dad are back uh, a bit earlier than planned. Uh, I can remember one of those. I think it was my sister's party. And I remember uh, trying to... Uh, Mum and Dad will be listening. Can you remember this? Um, we were trying to get um, some silly string which had stained the sort of... Uh, a fawn-coloured carpet in the living room and scrubbing that off before uh, mum and dad uh, saw it. Uh, maybe, perhaps later in life, you can think of a time when maybe you were messing about at work and then the boss came in. Um, or, or perhaps uh, for uh, uh, older uh, people, perhaps you've been climbing up a ladder and uh, your son or daughter finds out and tells you off. Um, I'm sure you can think of something like that. Do just share in the comment section if you're on Facebook. And if you're not, just to have a think and share with whoever you're with. We'll see what comes up and uh, share with each other. So I'll just give you a minute or so for that. on, despite the fact I told it not to. But the sound works. It's, it's nice to know it works, isn't it? Yeah. These machines just think they know better, don't they? <laughs> I know you said turn me off, but I think, I think I'd like to put the sound back on. That's great. Uh, so I'm getting some comments. Ah, oh, Rebecca Pickles talking about her mum doing that. Yeah. Her carer said she was not to go upstairs anymore, but she used to sneak upstairs in between the carers coming. I'm sure, are you one of those people who, uh, you know, lots of people who, who, who sort of need to clean up before the cleaner comes, if you've got like a home help coming in or something like that. And Liz Holdsworth is admitting to standing on a stool flicking peas off the ceiling that we'd stuck on with ketchup when my mum came in. <laughs> That's brilliant. Liz, I can't imagine you're ever that naughty. Any other comments? Anyone admitting to? I tell you, there's one. My mum used to make fantastic homemade ginger beer, and there's one time um, when uh, we uh, I couldn't get the screw top off. She used to use old um, lemonade bottles, and couldn't get the screw top off to pour myself some. So I thought, oh, I know, I'll just um, I'll make a I'll skewer a hole in the top with a skewer, um, and and it was pretty potent ginger beer, and the whole thing went whoosh. And I was going, ah, it sprayed ginger beer all over the ceiling, uh, which, of course, is really sticky. And uh, I think it was like a sort of polystyrene, really hard to, um, uh, to clean off. Sorry, Dad, I think it was you that was cleaning that one up. Anyone else going to admit to anything? Oh, yes, of course, Hillary reminds us about uh, 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 Barbara sneaking into the into the uh, kitchen when she had been banned, naughty Barbara. And Celia caught her out on that one, didn't she? Yeah. Pa Patricia Worthington says, I was making sandwiches for the party that the landlady told me I couldn't have, and then she walked in. Fantastic. OK, so can you think of any world events now, any world events where people were caught off guard, um, either now, a current one, or, or in history, um, so not just personal domestic things now, I think wider world events where people haven't been ready and uh, they've been sort of caught napping, as it were. So um, have a think about those. Again, share it in the, in the chat if you would.
You may think of something perhaps relating to the pandemic where maybe we weren't quite as ready as we might have been. Anyway, have a think. World events either now or uh, in history where people weren't ready. Yes, Apollo 13 says, uh, <laughs> says this. Oh, the Falkland Islands. Yes, that's a good one. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? I'm sure if the Lord Jesus said, I'll be coming back on this particular date, we'll all be ready. Um, but, uh, well, as we will hear in the Bible reading later on, it's not going to be like that. Sue Barnett says, attacked by the Japanese on Honolulu. Yeah, there have been lots of lightning strikes in, in uh, battles and so on where people have been caught napping. I suppose it goes back as far as Troy, doesn't it? Oh, this lovely wooden horse our enemies have left us. What could possibly be wrong with that if only they'd known? Well, look, thank you ever so much for your answers. That's great. I hope you've enjoyed thinking about that. We'll have a little bit more of a discussion on the theme of readiness later on. So we're going to come now to our confession. Jesus says, of course, the Lord will come suddenly. Do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. So let's confess our sins together, shall we? You'll see the words on the screen. Lord our God, in our sin, we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear God's words of generous forgiveness. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Now, our next song is a video from uh, Stuart Townend, and I pop the words on for us all to sing along to. Um, Jesus, of course, needs to be in every part of our lives so that we may be ready when he comes. So let's uh, sing at the top of our voices, Christ be in my waking. Christ be in my waking as the sun is rising in my day of working with me every hour christ be in my resting as the day is ending calming and refreshing watching through the night christ be in my gladness for the joy of living, thankful for the goodness of the Father's hand. Christ be in my sorrow, in my day of darkness, knowing that I follow in the steps He draws.
do like that song, don't you? Now, before our Bible reading, we've got a special treat. We're going to hear from Hannah, uh, our uh, young lady who is uh, now in Southampton uh, doing nursing training. And I've asked her just to do us a short video, a bit about how she's getting on and uh, how God has been with her over the last few weeks. So here's Hannah. Hi, everyone. It's Hannah. I used to help Barbara out with the sound on the Sunday service. I moved to Southampton in September to start my new nursing course. I've learnt a lot since coming here and I spend most of my time in halls and going into uni once or twice a week to learn skills. Here are a few videos of where I live which isn't too far away from the New Forest. Stand off between the horses and the cows. I joined a new student-led church called St Mary's, which is very different from Emmanuel. I've been a few times since coming to Southampton, but it's so difficult to get a slot because it's so busy and it usually is fully booked by Wednesday. It's been full every time I've gone and they have students come up and give sermons and do singing and we all join in. I hope everyone at Emmanuel is keeping well and I'm looking forward to seeing you hopefully at Christmas. Thank you so much, Hannah. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Now for our Bible reading. We'll hear Jesus' warnings about what is to come. He's been talking about the destruction of the temple, which happened about 40 years later in AD 70. And so these words we're about to hear, there's a kind of question. Is he still talking about the temple? Or is he talking about the time of the end? Or is he talking about both? Good morning, everyone. The reading is taken from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert, you do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Jackie. In the medieval church, in the last few days of Advent, the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, in their evening worship, 
was preceded by a short burst of praise using some Old Testament titles for Jesus. Emmanuel, Rod of Jesse, Dayspring from on high, Key of David, and so on. While those very ancient words have been made into the Advent hymn which we now sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So, time for a bit more discussion, folks, if you're ready. Um, whether Jesus is talking to first-generation Christians just before the destruction of the temple, or whether he's talking to all Christians getting ready for him to appear in glory, he warns us to be ready. Elsewhere in the scriptures, Jesus says, keep awake and alert, and he uses the picture of a household waiting for burglars to break in. But here in Mark 13 that Jackie read to us just now, he says, keep awake and alert like household servants waiting for their master to come back late at night. They mustn't let the boss uh, find them napping. You see why I'm asking you before, if you remember, you know, being caught out at some point. So we're like household servants and uh, the master has gone uh, for a party, who knows, and we've got to be ready. And, you know, whether it's 11 at night or two in the morning or even as, as the cock crows, uh, don't let him find us asleep on the job. 
So first of all, easy question. Share a time when you needed to stay awake but kept nodding off. When you needed to stay awake but kept nodding off. Is this the moment for me to confess that I have fallen asleep in church sometimes? Um, not here, I hasten to add. Um, but sometimes when the sermon has been very uh, long and not terribly interesting, I've never quite fallen asleep when I'm preaching, but I know when that happens, <laughs> I should have done more preparation. <laughs> So, uh, have you ever, uh, 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 often I find my head nodding, uh, uh, very boring meetings as well. Um, I did have a colleague, uh, in fact, Celia's first boss, uh, so it's our, our first vicar when we got married, and uh, he once visited an elderly lady who was one of these ladies who didn't have many visitors and just loved chatting, and she was sort of chatting away. And uh, his eyes got heavier and heavier. He had young children at the time, not enough sleep, and the, and the, and the room was very warm. <laughs> he fell asleep. And he woke up, however much later, to find that she was still talking and hadn't realised. <laughs> so it was a win-win situation. So anyway, as that happened to you, do share in the, in the comments, if you can, a time when you needed to stay awake but kept nodding off. If you've fallen asleep during one of my servant, sermons, just keep that to yourself. Let's see if I can persuade my phone to show me what people are saying without deciding to uh, switch the sound on again. Oh, Roger Seymour says he was watching the Grand Prix qualifying yesterday and dropped off. Roger, I don't mean to be rude about your favourite hobby, but, you know, watching very fast cars going round and round and round and round is surely one of the best ways to fall asleep. Uh, anyway, whatever makes you happy. Chrissy used to fall asleep at school. Just seeing if any teachers used to do the same. Helen's not admitting to it. Oh, yes, she is. Virtual staff meeting. My camera was off. <laughs> Uh, Barb, fallen asleep many times at rock con concerts, so Richard would buy standing tickets only. Excellent. Did not the noise keep you awake? That's brilliant. Les whilst on exercise in the army between two and three in the morning. I mean, that's, that is a sort of classic falling asleep time. Uh, Graham Pickles dropped off while driving once. Becky woke him up. Uh, good. <laughs> Oh, yes, trying to watch the end of a good drama on the telly. Hillary, I've done that myself lots of times and had to sort of watch it again later to find how it ends, or just kind of ask Celia. Uh, <laughs> Penny talks about brutal sleep deprivation when the baby was young. Peter driving with the coach after a long... Oh, after a long day, not during while you were driving. Good. Patricia on a train ride. Found myself in, in a town I didn't know quite late at night. I prayed. These sorts of things are very good for one's prayer life. Thank you for sharing those. That's brilliant. And uh, I, I feel much better now. Um, slightly more serious question, but as Christians, what, what does it mean for us to stay awake, ready for Jesus' return, do you think? What does it mean for us as Christians Jesus says, stay awake. What does that mean? It doesn't presumably mean, you know, never actually go to sleep. Um, that's uh, mental torture, isn't it? Um, so how, what does it mean for us to, to stay awake? What sort of thing is Jesus getting at? And why does he call it staying awake, I wonder? Uh, any thoughts? I think, think away. And just because this is the serious question doesn't mean you can all go quiet now. So Chrissy says we must be alert and ready, absolutely. But what does that mean in practical terms is the, is the question. And what does it mean to be prepared? So if you know, perhaps a new Christian came to you and said, okay, what does it mean? I want to be alert and ready and prepared. What, what practically should I do? So Les says, keep your mind focused on the Lord. So there's quite a lot in the scriptures, actually, about changing our, our minds, isn't there? The, the more we go on as Christians, it's, it's not just our sort of faith that grows. Our minds get renewed so that we learn to, to think in new patterns of ways. So Becky says, uh, keeping our eyes on him, uh, being in Jesus and not of this world. 
being a witness for him at all times. That's something, isn't it, about taking, making the most of opportunities. Sometimes we get an opportunity to share our faith in an appropriate and gentle way, but we have to be ready. We can't be caught napping there. The moment sometimes comes and then passes quite quickly, so we have to just seize it at the right time. It's another phrase the Bible uses. There are two types of time. There's, there's one called chronos, which is ordinary tick-tock, tick-tock, clock time. And there's another word, kairos, which means sort of the, the right time. And uh, that's often in the Bible, that when Jesus says, the time has come, it's kairos, it's that moment. So I guess being alert to the kairos time, that's part of it. Staying aware of what this world is really about, says Penny. Keeping our minds on Jesus, says Susan. Jackie says, sharing the gospel with as many people as possible while there's still time. Philip says, keeping ourselves in the word and keeping the faith. I think that's important as well. A good way of staying awake actually is to spend time reading the Bible every day, even if it's just a little bit. Such a basic thing, isn't it? But so important. Uh, You know, we... When Jesus comes, we don't want to realize the last time we read the Bible was kind of a couple of weeks ago. Uh, It needs to be that day, doesn't it? Listening to God, obeying him, being aware and watching for the signs. That's smashing. Thank you so much for all those comments. Um, do, do keep them coming if you think of, of any more. Staying in prayer, I think, is as an important one. Just a reminder, of course, that we've got a week of prayer coming up, the 13th to the 20th of December. And uh, you, I've sent the link before, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it again uh, next week, of course. Um, dedicate an hour of prayer during that week. Come and have a look at some of the prayer displays that will be here. Uh, you can see from outside the church and so on. We're going to declare our faith now. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, one day we will all stand before God declaring our faith, our worship, and our adoration. Let's sing about that wonderful day. There is a higher throne.
Thank you, musicians. Now, I had a call last night from Sue Ingram asking if we could all pray, please, for her niece, Tina, uh, who's gone down with COVID symptoms. Uh, so if we could pray for Tina and her family for uh, good health and recovery, that would be lovely. So our prayers are going to be led now by Barbara Jenkinson. So thank you, Barbara. Let's say the collect together. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come to Advent, because of this very strange year, we can understand just a little bit of the hardship that Mary and Joseph went through, not being with family and nowhere to sleep but a stable. We pray to you, Father God, as this year is going to be anything but normal. Normally at Christmas we get ready for all the Christmas services, followed by refreshments with minced pies. Families preparing food for big family gatherings, and families of all ages getting together. But this is only going to happen in a small way this year. We pray, Father God, that you make your presence felt in all the people on their own, or in care homes, especially thinking of David and his wife Diana. Let's be thankful for our families, whether we can see them now, at Christmas or not. For the technology that enables us to keep in touch with them. Let us also be grateful for our church family and to keep in touch with each other and our friends who maybe we haven't seen for a while or who live alone. We know we cannot bring joy to everyone but if each of us keeps in touch with family and the friends that we know then maybe we can bring joy into each other's lives and just maybe it might be a very special Christmas, but in a different sort of way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most of us have plenty of food, a roof over our heads, and food to eat. But a lot of families don't, and there are those who are on their own and feeling isolated. We pray, Lord, that there will be provision of food and money for heating. We pray for the homeless and the refugees who have no real home or identity or whose families are miles away in another country without any contact whatsoever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, Father God, that you protect all our friends and family that are on the front line, especially if they have to work at Christmas. We also ask for more provision and support for those living with long-term effects of the COVID virus. We thank you, Lord, that several vaccines are in the final stages of being ready to be put into production. We thank you, Lord, for this provision and pray that when the vaccine is available, that people who are eligible to have one will do so. And we can then start to put this pandemic behind us and be able to hug each other and sing in church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that churches will be open over the Christmas period, and we pray for protection on all those attending the services, but also thank you for the technology to be able to watch them if we cannot get there. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. 
Amen. Thank you for those prayers, Barbara. We're coming towards the end of the service now. Just a reminder, we've still got some Christmas cards to deliver in the parish, so if you fancy an excuse to, to get out, then uh, come and pick up a, a bundle. Church is open from 11 till 12 every day, as you know, and 2 till 4 today, of course, and uh, just deliver a, a bundle for us. That would be lovely. The links for the online giving are being posted now. Once again, thank you very much for all those who do that. Uh, contribute to the uh, virtual offering basket going around now. We're going to sing our final hymn, another Advent special, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending. the Father keep you in his care. The Lord Jesus Christ be your constant friend and the Holy Spirit guide you in all you do now and always. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love 
and serve the Lord. In, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Do join us for a cup of coffee on Zoom if you like, and uh, it would be lovely to chat to you then. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a very good week, and we'll see you again with Bishop Allison in a week's time. Bye for now. <laughs>